I want to ask you about the specifics of your plan in a moment, but, but I want to know, after the tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut, not to mention in Las Vegas or Orlando, there are always pushes for new gun control restrictions. Congress doesn't do anything ultimately. How does a President Buttigieg get it done? Well, you begin with the fact that America wants this to get done. How much longer can something go against the will of the American people before we have a breakthrough? That's why my plan focuses on action, political action, policy action, civic action. Uh, right now, it doesn't seem like there's been much of a penalty to, to be paid, for example, uh, for Mitch McConnell's decision to prevent the universal background check legislation that passed the House, something, by the way, which enjoys support from the majority of Republicans as well as Democrats across this country. There's not much of a penalty for the Senate blocking that. That's got to change, and it's why one of the actions we propose uh, that uh, you don't have to be president to do, any one of us can do, is to get a hold of your senator. It's recess. They're at home. They're going to events in their home states. I think they should be back in Washington on an emergency basis dealing with this. But until they are, uh, we're urging everybody to reach out, call their senator, find their senator, and get something done about this. Look, we know that there are a number of measures that can help save lives. We also know that this is not only a matter of gun safety, but of countering violent extremism here at home. Uh, the decision that this administration made to reduce funding and cancel programs for dealing with violent extremism is the wrong direction. Time to turn that around before we're dealing with another attack like this in the future. So, Mr. Mayor, one of your proposals is to end the Senate filibuster so it will be easier to pass uh, gun restrictions. That would make it so only a simple majority of senators have to support a policy for it to pass as opposed to the threshold of 60 votes now. That theoretically would have allowed Republicans to repeal the Affordable Care Act back in 2017. Are you sure this is the best way forward? Look, uh, if the filibuster, if it weren't for the filibuster, we would have a lot of measures right now. Remember, you, you referenced Sandy Hook, and a lot of us thought, you know, if children can be murdered at that level uh, in our country, surely that will be the last straw. And legislation uh, moved and uh, was filibustered. Uh, it stopped dead in the Senate. Uh, we can't go on accepting this. Uh, yes, it, it uh, creates all kinds of uh, new challenges politically, but uh, when the will of the American people can be defeated so easily, on the floor of the Senate. Uh, it is time for a change. And it's clear that the filibuster, which has a complicated and rather dark history to begin with, has outlived its usefulness to the American people. Yeah, but you didn't acknowledge my point, which is, okay, so in Sandy Hook, after Sandy Hook, that would have been passed, but then the Republicans would have taken over the Senate, uh, and then it would have been completely undone. I mean, that's, that's the whole point. And then they would have been, yeah, and in my view, if that had happened, they would have lost power in 2018. Uh, look, we can do a lot of counterfactuals, but, uh, you know, I think it's, it's meaningful that, uh, that the ACA is intact even after uh, a lot of what we've been through. Now, of course, the administration is trying to dismantle it. Look, the point is, if we're asking ourselves this question of how is it that this, uh, we say never again and it always happens, uh, the indication is that we've got to make structural change. You can't go on doing the same thing and expect a better result. Obviously, there are structural problems in our politics. When you've got an NRA that no longer even speaks for the majority of gun owners and yet is able to get its way in Washington against the will of the American people, uh, when you have these things that, that America expects and Washington can't deliver, something is wrong in the very structure of the way decisions are made in Washington. That's what we've got to change, and the filibuster is part of that. Uh, Mr. Mayor, part of your, your plan is a ban on what are called assault weapons. They're certain types of semi-automatic weapons. What does that ban look like in your administration? Does it stop at outlawing sales? Does it include a, a mandatory uh, assault weapon buyback? Will you require those who own these weapons to, to turn them into the government? W what happens? My focus is on stopping sales of new ones. Look, uh, there are some estimates that there will be 130 million more guns on the street by 2030, if nothing changes, some of which will be these assault or military style weapons. Things like uh, what I carried around when I was in Afghanistan that just have no business on American streets or anywhere near schools uh, in, in a country at, at peace. Uh, so let's start by banning new sales of these weapons. Then we can figure out other mechanisms to reduce the number that are circulating out there and above all, stop them from falling into the wrong hands, which is why things like not only universal background check, but uh, disarming hate, 
uh, through a, a red flag law that covers hate crime, uh, and things like closing the boy boyfriend loophole and the Charleston loophole are so important as some of these secondhand weapons do continue to circulate in our country. Will it stop every problem, every crime? No, but it will save lives, and we have a moral responsibility to do everything we can to save the thousands of lives that are at stake right now.